Ние интервју со Лидија Елкури, проект менеджер во Текстгейн, ќе поразговараме на тема вештачка интелегенција и платформа која што Текстгейн ја развива за регистрирање на говор на омраза на социјалните медиуми. Welcome uh, to Mia interview. Thank you. Lovely to be here. Uh, my first question is, uh, can you explain us what is TextGain line of work? Uh, as I do some research, you are focused on hunting hate speech at social media uh, through the European Observatory of Online Hate. Uh, how does this platform work? Which social media uh, do you follow and in which countries? Okay, so TextGain is a spin-off of the University of Antwerp in Belgium. So we're a, a, a very varied group of people who are computer scientists, data scientists, law enforcement, um, people who work in civil society like me, and also sociologists. So we're a mixed, varied bunch who want to use artificial intelligence for positive social change. So exactly, we monitor social media for for trends that um, can either be connected to hate speech or disinformation. And one of our largest projects is the European Observatory of Online Hate. And it is basically a research dashboard that people can use to, to analyze data. Um, it is automatically um, generated for them to look at different themes on social media. So, it's actually in almost 30 languages. Um, so the 20... Anybody can use this platform? Yeah, it's EU-wide. The, the platform, the dashboard is in 24 working languages of the EU, as well as Russian and Arabic, because they're significant languages to, to Europe. And now, of course, with our project, Macedonian and Albanian too. So it, it monitors 12 social media platforms from mainstream platforms like Facebook. Instagram, um, Twitter has moved less to the mainstream, to other fringe platforms. We call them fringe because they're more on the edge and usually unregulated and unmoderated or less regulated and less moderated. Um, where probably toxic messages or hate speech is probably much easier to find. Uh, can artificial intelligence, uh, uh, something like this dashboard, hunt uh, speech without any negative effects? Uh, having in mind, uh, it is a combination of frequently used words, as I understand how it's functioning, but uh, the word itself may not uh, constitute uh, as hate speech, uh, if not in context, if not put in context. How much can artificial intelligence get the context without causing any harm? So um, we, we have a methodology that we use and we, we don't start with tech, we start with human beings. So we work with annotators all over Europe in Albania as, or in uh, Macedonia as well with Albanian and Macedonian. And th the people that we work with are looking on social media for the words and phrases that are used. So, and they rank the words. So zero is offensive, but not illegal, not hate speech, but might be used in a context that is hateful. And then four is violent or threatening language. So it, it, there might be occasionally incidents where messages are flagged up that are false positives, but we have a lot of technology that we use to try and mitigate that, to ensure that that happens as, as little as possible and that we focus on the messages that will help us understand what's happening online, help us understand on social media, and, and to do something about it. Uh, so human factor is very important in this process, as it, you said. It's crucial, absolutely. So it needs to start with human beings, then uh, the creating the words that are actually being used online, not using Google Translate or any kind of um, technology to create the bank of words, and then it runs through our algorithm, our, our technology, which is transparent. And then again, it comes back to human beings to use that data, that information in the best way that they possibly can. Uh, you also uh, are developing technologies to hunt this information. Uh, how successfully can artificial intelligence define this information without, my next question is connected to previous, without the human factor, but yeah. there must be a human factor as you said before. Absolutely. Well, the, the need 
for the technology needs to come from from the humans that are involved, whether it's civil society, law enforcement, um, or or academia. So yes, we we've developed lots of different um, tools and techniques to to find to detect disinformation. Um, we're part of a European wide um, network called Ben Edmo, and uh, that is set up to to identify disinformation. So um, it's such an important part, particularly this year. I think 70, 74 countries in the world are having elections, almost half the world. And the level of disinformation is, is, is a great cause for concern and something that we're working on constantly. And, and we have to constantly innovate and adapt to the situation because the situation is changing all you the time. You mentioned elections in North Macedonia also. We are heading uh, for double elections Definitely. in this country, right. uh, parliamentary and presidential elections, a period when the atmosphere among politician, uh, political op op opponents heats up. Yeah. Uh, is the European Observatory for hate speech used in these processes, el these electoral processes before? So it, we haven't used the EOOH dashboard for um, in the lead up to elections before. We have other tools and technology that we use um, but it can be certainly used. I mean, we will be, over the next few months, working with Macedonian journalists and uh, academics who will have access to the dashboard. They can use it to develop their own research questions. So they can look at different platforms in Macedonia, see where um, toxic conversations are taking place, and analyze it using our, our scraping tool. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you are working with the local uh, Macedonian linguists uh, in Macedonia and in Albanian language in this country. Uh, can you tell us something more about these activities? So, as I come back to the human in the loop um, that we mentioned at the beginning, it's just it's essential to work with local native speakers using the languages um, that are used in 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 Macedonia. So. Are, we're working with four linguists who've been putting together a lexicon of over 6,000 words that are either offensive to, to threatening, highly violent language that's used online. And their help in building the, the lexicon of words means that we can automatically detect and quantify the problems in and around hate speech. This in, is an ongoing so process. Uh, are you still collecting the words? We, we're sti we've reached 6,000 words and we're still collecting. We will wrap up the, the annotation part at the end of March. But we've, we've had a fantastic um, collaboration with ICS, who, who have developed the project, and with uh, three academic universities with linguists in, in, in Macedonia as well. Uh, can artificial intelligence create a hate speech? Yeah, of, of course it can, and it, it does, I'm sure, it, in whatever format it comes. Um, and that's part of the reason why we do what we do, is to try and get to the source of, of um, artificially generated hate or human generated hate, and, and to do something about it, whether that means informing law enforcement if there's threats to violence or talking to civil society about how they can do, do more about it. Because I think particularly with civil society, there's a great role for them to play in taking data and um, analyzing the data and, and seeing what needs to be done about the situation on social media. Um, and we, we really were delighted that Macedonian civil society is taking this you're opportunity. You're professional, you work in this area, but how the ordinary citizens, are, uh, how to recognize that something, uh, when we said it's hate speech, is not created by human beings, but by artificial intelligence. So it, it's hard to say universally, but there are red flags. You know, I mean, for example, if there are grammatical mistakes in the text, it suggests maybe a bot is using it, maybe it's using a translating a software to just spread toxic information or, or to disrupt society or disrupt democracy. So that's one red flag you should, you should look out for. But, um, but also there are generic signs you often find with people who are using social media to stir up um, or to disinform um, have very generic 
at sign. So it can be at a number or a, a very fake looking profile picture. These are all things you should be aware of. And, and I would really recommend that you report them to the platform. If you think somebody is acting like a bot or sowing dissent and causing disruption, report to the platform. They have a duty to do something about it. It depends on the platform. Some do more than others. But with the European, the European Union has, has just last week brought in a law called the Digital Services Act that will, will, um, it will hold social media platforms to account. Thank you very much for this interview. My pleasure. Thank you.